Welcome to AGK's Vinyl Life. I'm your host, Anthony K. And on this episode, I'm going to be showing you a box of VCLT I received from Pat, the vinyl archivist, another vinyl community member. And thank you very much, Pat. I am very, very, very grateful for this bo box of, uh, of LPs and singles. Um, but before we get to that, uh, just a quick note. Uh, some of you might have noticed in a couple of my previous videos I was wearing a mask and I had a number of questions about that and the reason I was wearing that mask was not because of COVID or anything like that. It was because I had an unfortunate accident and lost one of my front teeth here and I was going to wear a mask uh, until I got the tooth repaired but it looks like I won't be getting this tooth repaired for a long time um, due to some issues. It's not going to be a quick fix and I, I'm not going to wear a mask in my videos for the next couple of months. <laughs> so uh, please excuse the missing tooth. I am a little bit embarrassed about it and, and I, I'm a little bit self-conscious about it. But I'm going to soldier on because that's what we do here in the vinyl community. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's what we do in the vinyl community. And let's get to the VCLT that Pat the Vinyl Archivist sent me. And there's some great stuff here and some not so great stuff here. <laughs> but um, thank you, Pat. First and foremost, thank you very much, Pat. You're a good friend. Uh, I'm very grateful for every piece of vinyl I received in this box. Very, very grateful. And for, and for those of you who don't know what VCLT is, because that's another question that you see around a lot, is people go, what's VCLT? They've never heard of this. What's this VCLT stuff? VCLT stands for Vinyl Community Love Train. And it's basically where vinyl community members like myself send each other free records just out of the goodness of our hearts sometimes we see other people in their videos or live streams are saying you know i'm looking for a copy of this can't find it anywhere you happen to have a spare copy or one you're not listening or one you don't want you send it their way and vice versa and that's what the and that's one of the great things about the vinyl community is we share our records with each other uh many times and uh, i i haven't got a lot i haven't received a lot of vinyl uh vclts and that's no big deal to me. I received the odd one here and there. Naz Nomad has been very generous to me to send me a couple of VCLTs. And uh, Pat has sent me something uh, before. And this box of VCLT that he sent me, I'm very, very grateful for. And how this came about is about a month, over a month ago, um, Pat was on one of the live streams and he just decided to give away like 100 records. <laughs> like literally. He just decided to give away 100 records. He's a very generous individual, very great guy. I will post a link to his channel in the comments down below. Sub, sub up Pat, subscribe to Pat, check him out. He's such a wonderful per human being. Um, so check out Pat, the vinyl archivist. So he decided just to give away on the stream, like, you know, uh, 100 or so albums. And he basically said anybody, and I was there watching the stream, and anybody, it was like basically anybody watching the stream, anybody there, just pipe up if you want any of these things. And I, there was uh, there was maybe four here that I really did want because I really did need them. So I piped up and I was like, yeah, please, Pat, I take that gladly. Please, please, please. <laughs> and the rest I said, you know, if nobody else, there was, and there, there was a few others that I was just basically, you know, uh, if nobody else wants it, I'd be happy to take it. And so Pat put them in my pile. And that's how it came around. I received these, I don't know, maybe three weeks ago or so. Um, but I didn't want to make this video until I'd actually listened to all of the albums which I have now done. I've listened to every one of them and I'm going to, I've kind of put them in pile from worst, worst to best. <laughs> um, and, but I am, like I said, I'm so grateful, Pat. Thank you very much. I will cherish these, uh, even though some of them aren't, aren't the best. Um, I will cherish them all. Uh, but first up, uh, and I'm going to show you what I got now, and we're just going to go through them, and that's it. And not it's not a big, not a big fancy deal going on on this week's episode. I've got, I think there's about 13 albums here. I'm going to show you guys, and uh, and thank you once again, Pat. This is basically a thank you video, and to show you what Pat sent me, the generosity that I received from Pat is just, it's really spectacular. So first up is a 45 RPM single, and it's a UK press. And I don't know, I don't remember this one being shown or talked about in the live stream. It was actually tucked inside one of the other albums. And when I took, and took the album, I found this single in there. So I'm not quite sure wh how or where this came from. But it is a UK pressing, uh, I, I would imagine, first UK pressing uh, 45 RPM single of uh, 
seven seas of rye backed with uh, see what a fool I've been by Queen from their Queen 2 album a London EMI 45 RPM single great stuff seven seas of rye UK single so that was a surprise <laughs> so Pat I don't know if you knew that was in there but thank you very much uh, great little single that uh, doesn't sound too bad there's got a few clicks and pops on it but it sounds pretty good great stuff love Queen so that was a surprise now, first up, a record that caused a little bit of controversy when I first mentioned it on one of the streams, and uh, there, there's been some jokes about, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. It's not Pat's fault. It's no big deal. Uh, I don't know if Pat, you know, it certainly wasn't, you know, un something that Pat had sent out going, oh, here, have this record. It doesn't work, but I have this record. It's no big deal. Uh, could be, I, I have my tone arm set up to at 1.75 grams. Unfortunately my, my, unfortunately, my record player would not track this album. There's a strange little warp in it. But it is uh, Dawn Patrol by Night Ranger. So this is the only album that I didn't hear because both sides, every song, skipped all the way through. I might try play this on my linear tracking turntable. I didn't think of that. Um, but I will try to give this another spin on my linear tracking turntable when I have a working stereo again. Um, right now my stereo is in a little bit of pieces and <laughs> there's some, been some talk about that in streams and on another video I did earlier this this week. But uh, I will try to spin this on my linear tracking turbo, turntable. It wouldn't track on uh, my turntable, unfortunately. It just skipped all the way through. It had a very unusual little kind of warp bubble in it. And it's on uh, board rock, Boardwalk Records. Night Ranger, Dawn Patrol. So the, the, the jury's still out on this one, but thank you, Pat, for this anyway. Um, if uh, I don't know if you did played it uh, before you sent it out. If you did and it worked on your turntable, great. But you know everybody sets their turntables up. Could be just because of the setup on my turntable. It couldn't track this record. But I'll try on my linear tracking. But I, the thank you anyway, Pat. Really, really, really thank you anyway. Uh, I will give it a shot. I'll try to get this sucker working. I'll try to get it working. <laughs> uh, next up, um, is uh, I, I, I'm a so-so Poco fan, but uh, nobody else jumped on it. So I said, you know, I, I, I like a little bit of Poco. So I tried this one and I'd say this is my least favorite in the pile. The first song, uh, th this album is called uh, Rose of Cimarron. And the very first tr title track, Rose of Cimarron, is fantastic. Love it. But the rest of the album, not so much. But thank you, Pat, for this one. I do love the title track, but I, I think this is a weaker Poco album. I'm not a big, huge Poco. I don't know a lot about Poco. I used to have Poco's Legend album, and I enjoyed that. Um, but this one didn't really grab me too much. Uh, maybe Poco fans out here will like it. But Rose of Shimmeron was a fantastic song. The rest of the album's also. But thank you, Pat, for that. And next up, uh, another band that I really, really enjoy, and their th 347 Eastern Standard Time debut album, is, as far as I'm concerned, a classic. It's one of my, it's a favorite of mine, and it's Kla 2. And this is their Endangered Species album. Kla 2, Endangered Species. I believe this was the fourth album they released. And it's, it's I think it's their weaker album of, of all the albums that they released. I think it's their weakest effort. It did have one really good single on it. Knee Deep in Love was very popular. Uh, it's nothing, it's, it's a far... It's a far jump from their original debut LP, which was spectacular. It's okay. It's nice It's nice in that it helps complete my Klaatu collection. But not one of their stronger albums. But all the same, it helps complete my Klaatu collection. Thank you, Pat, for that one. Next up is a band called Streetwalkers. And uh, this, this is uh, the Vicious But Fair album. Vicious But Fair by Streetwalkers. Uh, real good, just rock and rolling. It's not, it's not what I expected it to sound like. It almost sounds like southern rock, if anything, um, than, 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 than straight up rock. But it's a good spin. It's got some really good songs. I think the last song on the first side, I really, really love the last track on the first side of this. Um, Streetwalkers, Vicious by Fair. Vicious, vicious but fair. And it's got a die cut cover. If you look at the eyes there, there's a die cut cover. Oopsie. <laughs> I'll take the record out. There's a die cut cover. And the eyes are hidden on the end. Well, they're pretty easy to see on that side of the inner sleeve. And then there's a different pair of eyes hidden in that photo there that, that fill in the, the cover here. And it's on Phillips. And this 
is an Irish pressing. And it sounds pretty darn good. It's pretty clean. It sounds pretty darn good. And it's an Irish pressing on Phillips Records. So that's kind of cool. Next up is Getz and Gilberto. Stan Getz, Juan Gilberto, Huello, Huello, Gilberto, featuring Antonio's Carlos Jobin, a famous, famous jazz album. This has been in my want list for a long time. It's just like, sometime I'll get this album. I've seen, you know, there's been so many reissues and represses and everything of this album, and, and I don't see it very much used. Um, it was like, one day, one day I'll get it. It's on my list. One day I'll get it. And then Pat had a copy. And this is one. Of, this is an original Verve. This is an original first pressing on Verve label. And it's a little click and poppy. A little click. A few clicks and pops on it. A little bit noisy. Uh, the gatefold's in pretty good shape. Pretty good shape. Not bad. It's in pretty good shape. A few clicks and pops. But for the number of times, I'll probably listen to the S album. And it's a great spin. It really is a great spin. I highly recommend it. Good jazz. Good Latin. Good Good salsa and Brazilian jazz. A um, few clicks and pops all the way through. You know, it isn't it's a very old pressing, but it's good enough. I'm happy with it. Thank you, Pat. I will enjoy spinning that. You know, the number of times I'll spin this album in my lifetime, good enough for me. Thank you very much, Pat. Uh, the next one up is Bl uh, Bloodwind Pig and A Head Rings Out. And I'd seen this album many times over the years and always been curious about what it was about. People said it was pretty good. And I was always very, very curious what this record was about. And uh, Pat had to had one in the pile, so I said, you know what, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to give it a listen. Uh, we'll see what this is about. Because I've seen this around. I've seen this around and never picked it up. and no, no idea who Bloodwind Pig were. But this is really good. This is really good. It's kind of... Prague kind of hard rock mixed with some jazz. Uh, you know, you got sax in there. It, it It's like jazz fused with rock and prog. And I really dug this. So anybody sees this pig head sitting around in your bins, pick it up. It is a good spin. This was the, this was the surprise, I think, of all the records I got in this pile. This was the surprise for me, how really, really good and how much I really enjoyed this album. Uh, the, the cover's a little bit worn, a little bit worn on the cover, but the, the vinyl sounds fantastic. It's one of these uh, inner, inner sleeve thingies, and it's on the brown A&M label. But Bloodwind Pig, I say, I say it's a winner. I say pick it up if you see it in your dollar bins or whatever. Bloodwind Pick, fantastic. I love it. I love it. The next one up, uh, I'm a big Zappa fan. He had a copy of Zappa's Chungo's Revenge. That's right, Zappa's Chungo's Revenge. As you can see, this cover has seen, <laughs> has seen some better days. This cover is pretty much trashed, like really trashed. It's split all over. The, <laughs> it's split all over Hell's Half Acre. It's trashed, but you know what? The vinyl, and it's on the Bizarre Record label, the vinyl is clean. This vinyl is clean and good sounding. Uh, the re it looks like the cover took all the beating, but the vinyl survived. It's got the original inner sleeve in here too, which is in good shape. The vinyl is clean, sounds good. <laughs> the, <rec> <laughs> the cover, not so much. If I ever see a copy of Chunga's Revenge in a bin somewhere that's, that's trashed, a dollar bin that's trashed, I'll do a cover swap because the, the vinyl on this is clean. Clean, clean. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Love this album. Another one from my Frank Zappa collection. Chunga's Revenge. Next album is uh, from a young lady by the name of Patty Smith, spelled S-M-Y-T-H, as there is another uh, vocalist by the name of Patty Smith. Uh, but this is Patty Smith, and she was famous for doing, uh, being on the album by Scandell. She was the vocalist. Uh, on the album Scandal from the 80s with uh, I Am A Warrior. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, Patti Smith from Scandal. This is her solo album, Never Enough. And I took a chance on this one when Pat was uh, offering this out. Nobody nobody was taking, doing the take on this. So I took a chance because I knew Scandal and I always enjoyed that Scandal album. So I took a chance on this and it's really good. I really like this album. Really good stuff. 80s, 80s pop rock. Um, Patti Smith. Never enough. Good spin. Thank you very much, Pat Vinyl Archivist, for that one. And now the, what I call the, the last few here are what I call the cream of the crop. The cream of the crop. First up, 
Uh, it's not one of their best albums in my opinion, but I do like it. It's a harder edge. I think it's a harder edged album than, than their other ones. Uh, it's, it is Van Halen, fair warning. Van Halen, fair warning. I all thought this album should have been called Mean Streets. I think it just, you know, the, the, you look at the cover. It's got a pretty hardcore cover going on it. On, on it. Some hard, there's some hardcore things. If you really look at this cover, there's some hardcore stuff going on here. I and they, the, the opening track is called Mean Street. I think they should have called this album Mean Street. I think it would have been better than Fair Warning. Um, but it's not a bad album. Not one of their best, but I really like this album. Mean Streets, So This Is Love, Push Comes to Shove, and Unchained. I loved Unchained. Uh, a good album, a good spin, a good spin, good Van Halen. Was missing from my vinyl collection, so thank you, Pat, for that. And as you can see, this is in really, really good shape. Uh, really good shape with the original inner liner. Uh, and it's obviously a first American pressing. So all these, uh, most of these, other than the, the, the UK and the Irish pressing, most of these are, are, are U.S. pressing. So for us here in Canada, U.S. pressings are always really nice to have because we always have Canadian pressings. And most of our old stuff is Canadian pressing. So import U.S. pressings are a little bit of a treat for us. So U.S. pressing of Fair Warning by Van Halen. Great stuff. Nice to have it in my collection. Thank you for that, Pat. Next up in the pile is the second outing from Styx called Styx 2, and this is a great spin. This is a, I think it's an underrated spin. Uh, I think the early Styx stuff is really, really good. It was definitely more in the prog vein, rock, hard rock prog vein, than, than say, you know, Equinox, Crystal Ball, Grand Illusion, Pieces of Eight, um, less commercial, obviously, than those. Uh, I think Styx 2 is fantastic. There's some really good prog stuff on here. Uh, it did have. It was the first album to have a big single for Sticks, which was "Lady," was the big single from this album. So that's on here. The cover is a little bit beat. The cover is a little bit beat, but the pressing is clean and sounds beautiful. Sticks to by Sticks, fantastic album. Highly recommend it. Uh, next up in the pile, uh, and we're down to the. I think the my favorite three of the whole lot here. Uh, next up is another Sticks album, and this is Paradise. Theater, that's right. Paradise Theater by Styx. A much, much later from Styx Two, because after Styx Two there was their third album, then Equinox, Crystal Ball, um, Grand Illusion, Pieces of Eight, Cornerstone, and then I think this was next after that. So it's, it's much, much farther down the line. I think this might be their last really great studio album, Paradise Theater, and this is an original first U.S. pressing, and it's in pretty good shape. Pretty good shape. It's got a price sticker on it. I, I'm not going to try to peel the price sticker off because it will just ruin it. But as you can see, the cover's in, in great shape. And the vinyl is in beautiful condition. A, a little bit, uh, there was a little bit of crackle, but I did give it a wash. I gave it a wash and it's cleaned it up pretty good. So it's in pretty good shape. I love this album. It's a really, really great spin. And this is one of those original ones with the 3D laser etching. And then, you know, you got to remember, this is back in... 1980s. It's like 81. I know laser etchings and etchings are very common. Uh, etchings are very common on records nowadays, um, but there weren't too many back in the day. And this one had a 3D uh, laser etching in the grooves, in the grooves. So, and I don't know if the light, I'll try to, I'll, I'll just kind of flick it around and see if the light can catch it, but it's got this gorgeous, gorgeous etching on it. The original first presses of Paradise Theater had this wonderful wonderful etching on them so if you've got one of the original presses of this they have this gorgeous et etching on it so this is a treat to have an original etched uh 3d etched pressing of paradise theater by sticks thank you pat for that i will treasure that album it sounds good had a little cr crackle that cleaned up after i gave it a wash fantastic and the last two in the pile here uh an album i actually didn't have on vinyl I have their entire discography on vinyl. Uh, it is Dire Straits. I have most of their albums on uh, Mobile Fidelity, actually. Um, original master recordings, other than their Alchemy Live, which I actually have a beautiful French pressing of. Um, but for some reason, their debut album was missing on my vinyl collection. Uh, at the time when I bought the Mobile Fidelities, it was out of stock, and I just never got around to getting it. So it's been kind of it's been the, the one hole in my... Uh, vinyl collection that, for Dire Straits that needed to be filled, so it's now filled. Thank you. Thank you, Pat, for Dire Straits and their debut album with the fantastic Down to the Waterline, 
Uh, Water of Love setting me up. Six Blade Knife. Come on, Six Blade Knife is fantastic. Sultans of Swing, the classic, and the gallery. Wild West Hero Lions. This is, this is a fantastic spin. And other than this unusual stain on the cover, which I tried to get off, I used a couple of different messages, methods. It ain't going to go, so it's, it's just been added to the charm of the cover. <laughs> but the vinyl was super clean and clear. The vinyl sounds fantastic. And you don't play the cover anyhow. And it actually came with the original hype sticker too, which is kind of cool. Whoever owned it before just uh, stuck the original hype sticker on the back of the cover. And for some reason, he wrote the times of the songs on the back of the cover too. I, I don't know what he was doing, but whatever. Don't play the cover. The vinyl sounds fantastic. Dire Straits, their debut album. Nice to have that finally and complete my vinyl collection of Dire Straits. And last but not least, the one that I jumped on when Pat showed it, I was like, I need that, Pat, please. I'm begging you, please, buddy. I would love to have that album. And he did. He granted my wish uh, because it is very hard to find here. And it's one, an album I used to have many years ago that, that I don't even know why it's not, not in my vinyl collection anymore. I don't know whatever happened to it. Um, I must have traded it in on a whim when I was desperate for money at one time in my life or something. Who knows what I, why I did it. But I'm glad to have it back in my collection. And it is Neil Young and Crazy Horse, who I love, and Russ Never Sleeps, which is probably my third, fourth, third or fourth favorite Neil Young album of all time. So a Neil Young and Crazy Horse album of all time. My favorite, of course, is Ragged Glory, which is about to be replaced by the new Way Down in the Rust Bucket, which could be my all-time favorite Neil Young album now. But before that, it was um, Ragged Glory and Live Rust. And Live Rust was, of course, the live album from the tour for this album, Rust Never Sleeps. So a beautiful US pressing, clean, 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 not a click or pop on it. Sounds fantastic on Reprise Records. US pressing, fantastic. Thank you, Pat. I absolutely love this album. I've already spun it a half a dozen times. Fantastic. That The, the, the cream of the crop, as far as I'm concerned, of, the album, of, of all of these, but they're all great in their own way. So that is my VCLT from Pat, the Vinyl Archivist. Thank you, Pat, for everything. Thank you for these albums. They will be very, very well played and cherished. And uh, that's it, folks. That's all I got to show you. Um, thank you, Pat, once again. And um, like I said, follow Pat, the Vinyl Archivist. He's got a great channel. He does, uh, I think it's every other night or something, three, four nights a week. He plays music on his channel around, I think it's around 11 p.m., um, or 10 or 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. He spins music on his channel and has a listening session and has some, and sometimes Mark Anthony Kay from Project Gemini co-hosts with him and he, and he just spins, takes requests, spins music. Great guy. Check out his, check out his live streams. Check out his videos. Link to his channel down below. Thank you, Pat. Um, and as I always say in my videos, uh, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Thumbs up always make people feel good. And comments welcome down below. That's right, comments welcome down below. I always reply to my comments. And if you're not a subscriber, subscribe to my channel and turn that notification bell on uh, so you don't miss any of my videos. I try to post a, a video like this at least once a week. And uh, follow me on Instagram. My Instagram, of course, is at AGK underscore Lifetime of Vinyl, where I post my spin of the day every day, or almost every day. That's it. That's all. It's another video. I'll see you guys all real soon in my next video. Until then, as I always say in my videos, rock and roll!